Good morning. Uh, thank you all for being here despite the rain. I think uh, it's a blessing, regardless. Um, so on that small plot of land is what, where we do our research. It's a very small plot of land, and it usually takes us about 10 days to prepare it. You guys can probably have your fields ready in about two or three days. So um, we do this because we make sure that whatever we're testing, be it irrigation or fertilizer, the effects we get are the signal, not the noise. But first off, I would like to thank the Sweet Potato Station research crew headed by Adam Isserling for all the hard work that went into this. Believe it or not, it was bone dry yesterday, but now it's all like flooded. I think we've gotten an inch so far, where's Cole at? So an inch so far for the record. Um, also thank Cole Gregory especially. Uh, we take about 10 days to prepare our small plots here. There's some leftover trials there. Uh, we do drip tape on ours. So when we do irrigation trials, half of it is gonna get drip tape. The other half still gets drip tape, but it's turned off. So make sure that all those effects like the tubing in the ground gets accounted for. So, one of the things that we do here is try to answer your questions. And one of the things that I get questions all, all the time, and Mike Cannon is here, is what's the highest yield a sweet potato is capable of? That's a trick question, and we'll have answers for you later. The second question I get is irrigation. I know it doesn't look like it's got a big problem, but it's been a problem for many of us this year. We started off dry and hot, and irrigation was a big question all these years. I mean, uh, this year. And then, the other question I get is how much phosphorus do we need to put out and how much potassium? And somebody tells me, and he's in this crowd, I, I kid you not, that Arthur, we take whatever you recommend and double it. <laughs> Looking at you, you're there, so. <laughs> so whatever potassium, we, you know, we find out 200 works, we'll take it and do 400 because it's, you know, what's, what we do. But anyway, We've done all the studies this year, and I can tell you that all the data we have shows that um, adding that extra amount past our recommended parameters really doesn't benefit the crop. It doesn't benefit you, especially this year when everything's expensive. So we got some, some, some trials. We did this last Monday. It was a 98 days. We planted this on May 11, and this all set up this way. So the green bins are all your Orleans, and then the black, Bins is your Evangeline, blue is Borgard, and the red bins here is Biobel. So I'm looking at four different varieties because it appears that our varieties require different levels of phosphorus, different levels of potassium, and we're trying to understand that. On your handouts, there's three QR codes, right? The first QR code will get you the complete soil test. So it's important to account for the soil test. Our soil here is running 41 parts per million malic three test on phosphorus, and I think potassium is running, what, 70 something? Right, so we're using waypoint, the same waypoint that you all use, try to do that so we have the same results. And also the second barcode, if you have a question that you don't wanna raise in public, you can text me. So, and then the third barcode, uh, if you wanna stay after lunch for some real science, we've got a PhD student here who's gonna be working on the molecular basis of why we see all these results from, from our fertilizer trials. Basically, she's developing a test that will predict the requirements of Biobel and explain why every time you do a trial with phosphorus, the zero phosphorus plot gets the same results as 200 and 300. So, also, if you stay for that talk, it's gonna be a five minute talk, there's coffee and there's dessert. And also, um, we, we're giving out the, this little Sweet potato keychain to the first 10 who signs up, so. Um, all right, so, so right now, so this setup is here. Um, the first set is irrigated, so the first four is irrigated. The next set is not irrigated. Same thing here, irrigated, not irrigated, irrigated, not irrigated. This one, this set of plants got zero potassium. So we use, you, we use our, our base program is 45 pounds of N. Without pre-plant, everything goes in. We don't do any side grass here. Phosphorus was 60. Um, in hindsight, I would have done 80 on our phosphorus, and you'll see later on. 
and then we move on to 150 of potassium keeping the same N and P left the same but we increase our potassium to 0, 150, 200, 300 and this here we doubled the phosphorus here so this is by a bell we only we cannot fit the ones in one place so it has to go two so in your data there there is a data point that says for potassium I think it's BB underscore 300 well this is it we use 14 inch uh, 14 feet pots so this weighs about 35 pounds if you, if you do the math you're at around 35,000 30, 35, pounds per, 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 per acre. So that's gonna be around 800, 900 boxes per acre right there. That's US-1. On your handouts, you have US-1 yield and the total marketable yield. I did not include the canners and um, jumbo here because there's no, no space on the trailer here. So, in other words, you don't get any response for increased potassium for all the mainline varieties, your Orleans, your Evangeline, and your um, Borgard, but you do get a doubling of yield for Bayou Bell. So again, one of those things we're trying to look at, we see the opportunity to optimize fertilizer based on variety and based on the soil test. Um, if it is running a higher phosphorus next year or lower potassium, we can adjust it. But it looks like that's gonna be the most responsive variety so far. Then looking at doubling the phosphorus here, again, no response. Looking at um, Bayou Bell, I mean, looking at Orleans, uh, these are pretty, I mean, these are pretty evangelists, my favorite variety of all time in terms of flavor. Anyway, <laughs> that's Orleans, and then, but then again, you, you see a doubling of, of Bayou Bell. Now, the kicker here is that you double the yield only if you irrigate. This is irrigated, non irrigated. You reduce the yield by half. So far, we only got, so far when we dug this trial, we only got 10 inches of rain since May 11. I don't know how much you got, but that's our baseline. In other words, we normally get about 20 inches of rain during the season. So our rainfall was reduced by half this year. And as you can see, running across the varieties here, um, even if you raise your potassium by 300, if you don't irrigate it this year, your yield's gonna be here, reduced by half. So the mean difference between irrigated and then irrigated is about 50 to 60 percent, right there. Looking at your graphs. So if you really notice, if you look at your graphs, um, you can see that there's a first one basically shows our controls, but that's irrigated, non-irrigated, and you have Bayabel, Orleans, Borgard, and Evangeline there, and you can see the triangle in the middle of the, the box is the mean average. And if you see the difference between irrigated and non-irrigated, it's almost 50%. So I'm gonna be, and again, it depends on the variety. It also appears that Orleans is better at these droughty conditions than Beauregard. So in a dry year, it looks like Orleans would do better than Beauregard. We're running a trial in the greenhouse right now. It's running about a month. And in the greenhouse, if there's no water, I mean, there's no water, but Orleans still like, they're not surviving, but the slips are still standing up. So one of the things we think is going on here is that Orleans get a thicker stem than, um, than Beauregard. So we have Biobel and Evangeline there. They're all dead, the non-watered plants. But Orleans still up, but not thriving, but still up. So let me see, we've gone here, we've gone through the irrigation, so expect 50% loss or maybe around that part uh, if, if you only got a pinch of rain so far. The next question I get is, do we need to irrigate at planting? My answer typically is, if, the, if there's forecast of half an inch of rain within 24 hours, then we do not need to irrigate. But if there's not forecast of half an inch of rain within 24 hours of planting, then we need to arrange for water in that range. So my ideal rainfall is a half an inch of rain on a Friday afternoon after plant, right? <laughs> That's five o'clock when you all leave the station. <laughs> the next question I get is how often do you irrigate after planting? Well, again, if the forecast is an inch of rain, that's after planting, an inch of rain on a Friday afternoon, then we're good for the week. Otherwise, we need to arrange for an inch of rain. So if you count the number of inches throughout the growing season, it's 20 to 24 weeks for the growing season, and that's typically what we get. 
So, so far we only didn't get in half of it. Now the next set of um, grapes here, these were harvested a week, these were planted a week earlier, so these are 90 days. You have different varieties, you have Evangeline, Bayabel, Borgard, Morisaki, uh, Bonita, Orleans, and Bellevue. What we're trying to understand is how these varieties respond to phosphorus and no phosphorus. So if you come over here, you're going to see that Bayabel, there's no difference between 60 pounds of phosphorus and zero. That means it's a very efficient phosphorus variety. And for more details about the science of it, stay after lunch and coffee. <laughs> here you see Evangeline um, seems to respond better with phosphorus. So we think that Evangeline requires a bit more phosphorus than Bayabel. Morisake here. Um, this is Morisake without phosphorus. Look at all the hairs sticking out the roots. We call this side hairs. And we think it's a response to the plant in trying to find that phosphorus, putting out extra roots. On the other hand, you add 60 pounds of phosphorus and it cleans up pretty good right there. Looks like pretty good Morisake here at 90 days. So that really shows an aspect that we think we're on to that the plants adopt to low phosphorus by adjusting the root system, making it thicker, trying to find out where the phosphorus is. But again, that depends on variety. Borgard. Guess which one is this, plus P or minus P? This is minus phosphorus. <laughs> it's just right in the state. Well, that's Borgard without phosphorus, and that's Borgard without phosphorus. Oh, with phosphorus, I'm sorry. With or without. You spend, what, how many dollars per pound of phosphorus only to get this amount of yield from a 14-inch plot? That means that Borgard probably requires a bit more lower phosphorus than your other variety. I mean, higher, um, lower phosphorus than other varieties. Yes? Mike Cannon has a question for me. Uh, what's the native phosphorus? 41 ppm, Mike. Yes. That's, yeah. I know, right? Okay, so... Bonita, ah, Bonita, here. This is Bonita with phosphorus. That's not too bad. 90 days. Bonita with uh, phosphorus. And we've always suspected that Bonita is sensitive to salts, so we think we need to back up on the inputs for Bonita. Right here. Um, ah, Bellevue. Here's Bellevue. Bellevue with phosphorus, nice shape. Light skin though, but it's nice shape, 90 days. And that's Bellevue without phosphorus. So, yield's about the same, but we think they're shorter and more rounder than the one that's, you know. So, that's why part of our research is trying to understand how phosphorus affects the shape of the root. When it's trying to adjust the root system in response to low phosphorus, we think it's also impacting the shape. Orleans back here with phosphorus without. This is Orleans with phosphorus. Look at the shape, 90 days, not bad. This one's about that's probably about what 25 pounds so it's about yeah you know. <laughs> so, so you do a quick math uh 12 inch plot i mean 12 foot plots probably about 25 27 000, uh, pounds per acre um but we were in 14 inch spacing here so our rows are 40 inch in row is 14. so <laughs> we had to space it out because we expected to dig around this time so it helps with the sizing a bit. Even though you think there are fewer plants per acre, but then the yield is about the same. And we've done all the spacing trials all these years. It doesn't matter if you go 10 or 14, the yield's gonna end up the same if you dig it early or a cer certain day. Um, 60 pounds of phosphorus is there 60? 60 on the, yes, the phosphorus. That's our base. Looking back, I would have done um, 80 miles. So, looking back at your, um, graphs here you see that even though we added no phosphorus or no potassium they're all bunched up in the boxes there so that tells you that really depending on the soil and the variety there's really no need to add that extra hundred pounds of phosphorus or extra hundred pounds of potassium and again the other kicker here is that is it going to be a normal rainy year or a drought year because the response is going to be dramatically different so, I mean, if you go across the crates here, you can see the yields drop off. Irrigated, non-irrigated, irrigated, non-irrigated. So the, the other thing that interacts with your extra 100 pounds is, is it going to be irrigated or not? Because if it's not irrigated, you're gonna end up 
we'd have to do. So that is all that I have, and thank you for coming to my TED Talk.